Good afternoon, and welcome to our Mary Harriman Awards Luncheon. I'm Evelyn Zabo, a member of the AJLI Board of Directors and a member of the Junior League of Seattle. And there they are. Before we begin today's celebration, I'd like to acknowledge one of this year's annual conference sponsors, LIRAC Paris. As a brand that strives to empower women to make a difference in their communities, LIRAC is an ideal sponsor for the Junior League. They merge advanced scientific research with botanical expertise to develop high-performance skin care products and treatments for all ages and skin types, another attribute that makes them well-suited for an organization that values lifelong membership. I know that I speak for everyone in this room in thanking LIRAC for the wonderful gift bag on each delegate seat this afternoon. and especially for their generous donation of 10% of the purchase price of all purchases of LIRAC products made during annual conference back to the Junior League. So please pay our good friends at LIRAC Paris a visit at the LIRAC Spa in the exhibit showcase and pump your purchasing power muscle up over the next two days. Thank you. The Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award is the most prestigious honor we bestow upon an individual league member. We award it to someone who has set herself apart by championing a better future for her community. The Mary Harriman Award reminds us of what we all as individuals can accomplish for our leagues, our communities, and the Junior League movement when we are not limited by doubts, but empowered by confidence in our ability to make a difference. Now continue to enjoy your lunch, and I would like to invite the AJLI president, Tony Freeman, to the stage to begin the award ceremony. Thank you, Evelyn. Good afternoon, everyone. Back in 1901, a 19-year-old debutante with a social conscience rallied 80 of her peers to improve the squalid living uh, conditions of immigrants of New York. New York's Lower East Side forming the first Junior League. 89 years later, in 1990, the AJLI Board of Directors created the Mary Harriman Award, Community Leadership Award, as a way to recognize an individual Junior League member whose volunteer efforts really embodied Mary Harriman's pioneering spirit, her sense of social responsibility, and her ability to motivate others to share their talents through effective volunteer action. It serves as a modern day link, link to our rich heritage and the tradition Mary really began some time ago. Since 1990, this award has been given to Junior League members whose leadership exemplifies our mission, our vision, and our values. Past winners include former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, Mary Rivers Ingram, Chairman of the Vanderbilt University Board of Trustees and noted philanthropist and patron of the arts, Karen Cullen Luke, lifelong civic leader in Oklahoma City and vice chair of the committee that built the Oklahoma National Memorial and Museum, and last year's winner, lifelong community activist and volunteer Ann Milling, who founded Women of the Storm, the advocacy organization that put the needs of the Gulf Coast on the map in the eyes of legislators responsible for providing funding, as well as all the women depicted on your table centerpieces, and aren't they lovely? They're just very, very nice. Well, today, another remarkable woman joins their ranks. This year's winner is, this year's Mary Harriman winner as community leadership winner is Florence Shapiro. J. 
just wait till you hear all about her. She's a founder of the Plano Service League, which in 1984 became the Junior League of Plano, now known as the Junior League of Collin County, Texas. She's a powerhouse, she's a trailblazer, she's a dynamo, she's a reformer. <sighs> I just um, had a chance to meet her, and each of these words could be used to describe this really extraordinary woman who is our honoree this afternoon. But none of them could address the depth and breadth of her expertise, her insight, and the supreme superhuman energy she invests in the causes that she really commits herself to. Back in the 1990s, Florence, like Mary Harriman herself, recognized the big city problems that had begun to complicate the quality of life what was then her small town of Plano, and made a plan to tackle them. At a time when no woman's service organization existed in the area, she recruited 12 civic-minded women two of them who are with her today, whose aspirations were much like her own, which was to find solutions for needs that were going unaddressed in the community and to provide a band of volunteers who could really help. With Florence's leadership, this group of women formed the Plano Service League again in 1976 and focused on dental care for underprivileged children and supported the swine flu clinic. Her contributions were no, noticed and soon Florence was encouraged to run an, for an open seat on the Plano City Council. There she ultimately served six terms before becoming elected mayor. At the same time, she served as president of the Texas Municipal League and of the North Texas Council of Governments. In 1993, Florence was elected to the state Senate where she served in, in an array of posts, including serving as chair of the Senate's Committee on Education and a member of the Finance, Transportation, and Homeland Security Committees. Known as a champion for education, children, security, economic growth, and transportation, she counts among her most significant legislative achievements the passage of a bill to provide more money for classroom excellence, raise teachers' pay, improve college readiness, and curb dropouts, and establish the first ever incentive pay program. In addition to all of that, not like she had some time to spare, <laughs> she spearheaded what's called Ashley's Laws. It was a legislative package named in honor of a seven-year-old girl who was abducted and murdered in 1993. This law pan punishes and tracks sex offenders who have been used as, and has been used as a national benchmark, crediting for saving more than 500 children nationally. <laughs> Among the countless awards she's received include the Count Collin County Council and Family Violence Lifetime Achievement Award, the Children's Advocacy Centers of Texas Woman of Courage Award, the Texas Legislative Leadership Award from the Nature Conservancy, and the Law and Order Award from the D Texas District and County Attorneys Association, among just a few. So before I go on, and before you have a chance to meet her, we'd like to show you a video that summarizes some of her accomplishments. It's been said that everything Mary Harriman did, she did with enthusiasm, enlisting others to join her along the way. A natural collaborator, she recognized that women had an important leadership role to play in improving the community. The same can be said for Senator Florence Shapiro, who for decades has rolled up her sleeves and enthusiastically sought out solutions for meeting the needs in her community. In 1976, Plano, Texas was an emerging suburb of Dallas. Plano was a community in need of an organization where civic-minded women could join together and work to find solutions to their emerging community issues. 1976 was when um, we recognized, there were a group of women and, and myself, and we recognized that with this tremendous influx of people and with this dynamic growth in Plano, that we needed more than just volunteers in different places, but we needed an organization. 
and we spent a number of years as a Plano Service League, but it was very well um, accepted in the community. 13 of us started, the next year we had 26, and then 50, and it just grew by leaps and bounds. We were a very small town at that time, 17,000 people, and I had just moved to Plano and uh, was uh, taken into the league and got to meet Florence, who was uh, the founding president of the group. Florence was very impressive. Uh, she had a vision for what this small group of women could do in the town at that time and a vision for what was needed. I think my league experience probably was the, the, the nexus for everything that I did. The idea that, that I would organize as one of the founders, 13 women, uh, have a mission, find goals, objectives, meet those, uh, participate with people together. Um, it really was the beginning of my desire to continue um, serving the public. A committed community and civic leader. Senator Florence Shapiro did not enter public service to make a statement. She entered to make a difference. Senator Shapiro began her career in the Texas Senate in 1993. However, her entrance into elected office began decades before, and not long after, she founded the Plano Service League. I met Florence when she was mayor of Plano. She was the first woman mayor of her city, and she was a leader. She was a leader from the beginning. You could see it. Um, she just was a star. And of course, um, later down the road, um, my husband and I, he was state chairman of the Republican Party of Texas, uh, when a state senate seat became open, we both said, Florence and we talked to Florence and she was floored. She said, what, me? And we said, of course, you're the perfect candidate. And of course she ran and won and then became a real leader for Texas in the state Senate. Beginning in 1995, Shapiro worked closely with her friend and ally, Governor George W. Bush. Together, they helped to change the future of Texas by changing the education of Texas children. The historic reforms passed into law were simple, but they have had a profound impact. The idea of being chairman of the Senate Education Committee for, the, for eight years and to actually mold public policy in the education space, which is just so very important. I'm not sure there's anything that affects the lives of your citizens more than the education of their children. Another career-defining piece of work was a comprehensive package of bills known as Ashley's Laws. Seven-year-old Ashley Estelle was abducted from a Plano park and murdered in 1993, a crime that rocked the community and set Senator Shapiro into action. But we need new solutions. And I am sure that if this bill becomes law, that Texas will become the standard in sex offender laws. These laws, which passed in 1995 and 1997, have improved the way our state adjudicates, punishing, and tracks sex offenders, and is used as a national benchmark, saving more than 500 children nationally. Senator Shapiro used her skills learned in the league to bring groups together to work collaboratively to effect significant change. Ashley laws have been adopted by almost every state. What happened was Senator Florence Shapiro came to our Children's Advocacy Center and said, if you could change the system to protect children, what would you do? And from that, we, she, we, she created 27 different ish, items, and we formed what we loosely referred to as the Blue Ribbon Panel uh, to look at this. And from that, uh, and that was the genesis of what we know of as Ashley's Laws. I will say to the Estelles that Ashley's death was not in vain that maybe because of what happened to Ashley, these laws were put in place, and that's the reason I put her name on them, and that there will be children's lives saved in Texas as a result of what happened to Ashley Estelle. Diana and Dick Estelle, Ashley's parents, have a very close relationship with Senator Shapiro as well. I have heard Diana say how much respect she has for Senator Shapiro and how grateful she is 
to Senator Shapiro for all the work that she did and for Senator Shapiro never let Ashley be forgotten. She's tenacious. Uh, I, I respect her greatly, but boy, when she gets an issue and, and, and she, and, and particularly she's passionate about her issues, whether it be education, kids, uh, you know, it was like a, you know, a light bulb came off on, on her saying, you know, that this is something that needs to change. But Florence really honed her skills in the Junior League and as a community leader and then became mayor and has taken those skills, the tenacity, the never take no for an answer attitude, she took it straight to the mayor's office and then to the state senate. You know, she, uh, she's personable, uh, but I, I can tell you, uh, she can be as hard as a tack. I think that's why people respect her and love her, uh, because she gets the job done. Uh, she's just uh, been a tremendous gift to our community. We are so fortunate to have uh, her in our lives for the last 40 years and our community is all the better for her contributions and her commitment and her unwavering affection for the citizens of this area. She is a star. With a supportive husband and family, Senator Shapiro has been able to embrace her love of improving the community. One of the main things with her is her parents were Holocaust survivors and she, it was a very big deal to her um, to to see that for her parents to see the transformation, especially from going from Germany where they weren't even allowed to be citizens to one generation later, she was um, not only a citizen, but a very involved and vibrant citizen um, and a woman uh, able to hold public office and to hold state office, which was an amazing thing for just in one generation to see that change. The main thing that I have always said is because of my parents and their past, that I have always felt that God put me on this earth to be the bridge between my parents and their past and my children and their future, and now my grandchildren and their future. And I hope that um, as my time comes that when people look back they can say that I gave 150% to that, to that vision. I am convinced that women are enormously accomplished when they put their mind to it and when they decide that they want to do something. There's no better example than the Junior League. Uh, women that have an, an honest and uh, sincere desire to make the world a better place. Now it is my honor to welcome this year's Mary Harriman Community Leadership Award winner, the Honorable Florence Shapiro, to the stage. Ask Vincent that everything Mary has to do with the enthusiasm and listening others to join a natural collaborator she recognized that women had an important leadership role to play in improving the community. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm, I'm absolutely blown away. I, I wrote a speech and I'm sitting here thinking, why in the world would I say anything? <laughs> uh, this, this is just... Um, an amazing, uh, the video was just amazing, brings back some unbelievable memories um, of the early years in uh, what was then called the Plano Service League and the friends and the acquaintances and the people that I've been involved with for such a long time. Um, I, don't, I don't even know where to start, but I guess I'll, I'll try. Um, I looked at the list of women that have been given this honor over the last 10 years and I know three of them. So I'm really excited about that. The first, of course, is Ruth Sharp Allshuler, who's from Dallas. And Ruth and I have known each other because her daughter and I went to high school together. So I have followed that woman's career most of my adult life and, and high school life. And she is an amazing, amazing example of civic involvement. I don't know of very many people that have had a true lifetime 
um, of service, and Ruth Alshuler, of course, is one of those. And you may hear more about Ruth as you listen as we get closer to that dreadful month of November as we in Dallas uh, begin remembering the death of President John F. Kennedy, and she is the chairwoman of the entire committee that is going to be honoring uh, John F. Kennedy in November. So my uh, extreme uh, honor to be in the same, even in the same sentence as Ruth um, Allshuler. I also uh, am very good friends with Jan Lang Langbein, who is um, the, the head of what we call in Dallas the Genesis Shelter, which is an amazing organization that she has just been such an incredible um, and, and totally engaged individual with the Genesis House, which is a, for women, battered women and their children, and she is just a wonderful leader. And a woman that I haven't seen in years, but I have been, and she and I became such good friends, and it's very um, indicative of uh, pot potential people at your tables that you might not realize, but Glenda Hood, who is from Orlando, Florida, if there are people from, from Florida here. Um, and she and I were actually mayors of our communities at the same time, she in Orlando and I in Plano, and we served on a national board together of cities all over the, the country, and our connection to each other started by talking about our junior league <laughs> experiences, and that's the truth. So by way of that kind of basic introduction, I, I just want to uh, make a few few comments. I am so honored to be standing here um, on the shoulders of so many amazing women that have been involved in junior leagues over the, over the years throughout this country who have been engaged in civic involvement and civic engagement because they believed that they could be role models for other women. It goes as far back as Eleanor Roosevelt, Sandra Day O'Connor, as you heard, Texans such as Ovita Culp Hobby from Houston, Barbara Bush, Laura Bush, uh, Julia Child, was it nice to hear, Shirley Temple Black, Catherine Hepburn, um, all of these women and many, 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 many others have been before us involved in junior leagues all over this country and made an impact on lives. Um, there were hundreds and thousands of people just like them who have impacted the lives of people throughout this country following the life's dream of one woman, Mary Harriman. She was, of course, as you well know, the founder of the Junior League for which the namesake of this award is done. There are mothers, there are daughters, there are political figures, there are businesswomen, there are lawyers, retailers, people in diverse backgrounds and all kinds of skills that gather under one umbrella organization known as the Junior League to heed the call of service, to, to help our fellow man. Our goal is a simple one. It's a goal in training women leaders to transform communities that began 112 years ago, but have built a legacy of leadership, one volunteer at a time. And now I'll admit to you, I did not know a lot about Mary Harriman until I was contacted that I had won this prestigious award and decided that I would look deeper into who she really was. I knew she had started the organization, but knew very little about her other than her name. She started this with 10 women, 10 women that I think lent, to, lent itself to a similarity that we had in Plano, Texas, some almost 40 years, more than 40 years ago, when we first began looking at the possibility of having what we then called a Plano Service League, because we were not big enough to be a junior league at the time. So there were a lot of similarities as I began to review uh, the, the background. And certainly, uh, the Junior League of New York in the 1900s doesn't sound like there could be that much that would be common to the then Service League, Junior League of Collin County in the 1970s. But there were. Mary saw a time of change in New York with new immigrants, thousands of new people coming in on a regular basis to the city of New York with so many needs and so many expectations. We in Plano, Texas, almost 100 years later, saw similar influx of citizens in the 1970s. We had 15,000 people in Plano, Texas at the time. Just as a caveat, there's 300,000 in Plano, Texas today. 
And we saw that there were thousands of people coming in looking for jobs, looking for work, making sure that there were opportunities to raise families, at very similar to what was going on in the 1900s. So what better than to meet those challenges of growth and those needs head on with activism of purpose with a group of dedicated women. With her friends, Mary saw an untapped resource. 10 women gathered to organize and, and to start a statement of purpose and to contribute their time and their talents to a cause greater than themselves, community and civic engagement in an effort to make New York City a better place to live for all its citizens. Again, 100 years later in Texas, we did something very similar with the explosive growth that was very similar to New York. Working side by side with 13 amazing women in Plano, we saw the same need and the same desire to make a difference. We met with the same statement of purpose and civic engagement and our commitment to make our city and our county in Texas a better place to live for all of our citizens. And thus began our evolution from a Plano Service League of 13 women to a junior league today of over 900, counting all of our sustainers and our active members. Today, I stand with each of you a better parent, a better grandparent, a better, a better citizen, and yes, even a better elected official because of the activities and the leadership skills the life lessons that I learned, particularly how to work well with others <laughs> as an elected official, as I stand side by side with women across this country who want nothing different than Mary Harriman wanted some hundred years ago, but to engage our associates, to engage our community in one of the most important endeavors of civic life, volunteerism. Each of our league's purpose is to enrich our members' lives while serving the needs of each of our communities. To quote Mary Harriman so many years ago with Eleanor Roosevelt by her side, she said, we're just a couple of girls anxious to do something helpful in the city in which we live. A hundred years ago, we today still use that philosophy. I thank you for this amazing honor and I must use these last few moments to thank those closest to me who have come with me today to join with me just one more time from Texas. These are the individuals without whom in my life it would be empty and it would be without purpose. All of my skills, all of my accolades over so many years are hollow without their support of which I cherish deeply. So I would ask if you would please stand as I call you out because I would like all of the women in this room to see whose shoulders I really stand on. First, my mother, Anne, would you stand? Thank you. My daughter, Lisa, and my daughter, Stacy, and my daughter-in-law, Jory. He's not going to be happy with me, but my grandson, Joshua. <laughs> Joshua represents my 10 grandchildren. And they are, as you can imagine, the light of my life. So I'm so glad he's here. My two closest and dearest friends, Jenny McCall and Carolyn Dickey, whom I share my ups and my downs, mostly my ups, I hope, and who have been through everything with me over 40 years of friendship. I can honestly tell you, Carolyn and Jenny, this is the last award ceremony that you will have to come to. <laughs> I love you both dearly, and I'm so happy you're here with me. Carolyn and Jenny. <laughs> I 
My husband Howard couldn't join us here today, but I do hope that he is here in spirit. To the Junior League of Collin County, as I mentioned, now 900, from 13 women to 900 women. You are serving as an inspiration, as leaders in our community, and you are giving an, a lasting and a positive change to everyone in the community of Collin County. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for nominating me for this amazing and highest of all honors in Junior League. Jennifer, if you would stand, our current president, Jennifer Jameson. And Ma Marina De La Garza, where are you sitting? Marina is our president-elect. Angie and Sarah, would you both stand, please? Also members of the Junior League. Angie, Angie will actually be the president in a few years. To each of you here today, I am going to leave you with a charge. I always do that in my speeches. The charge is to remember that character building is a life process. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, character building begins in our infancy and continues until death. We must work at it every single day when life sends us curveballs, and it often does. But be steadfast. Go forward. You're doing what you believe is in the best interest of the citizens of your community. Remembering service to others begins with leadership development of oneself in order to promote volunteerism and improve the quality of life in the community in which you serve. I wish you all Godspeed and success along the way. Thank you so much. Thank you, Florence. For, uh, Florence, first of all, we know that this is not the end of your awards. Okay. <laughs> For them it is. <laughs> They've had enough. <laughs> but we really thank you for being an inspiration to all of us. And like Mary Harriman, you've guided your life by an extraordinary sense of social responsibility. And I really want to thank the Junior League of Collin County for bringing forward an extraordinary candidate for our award this year. Also, uh, we're really privileged that you're a member of our organization with all your accomplishments. And again, um, we just think that you're, uh, you've been an inspiration to all of us, and it's wonderful that your mother and your rest of your family is here, including your grandson. It's just really special for all of us. As, <laughs> oh, did he hide yeah. under the table? <laughs> it took a lot for him to stay. <laughs> I guess so. And also, your, uh, your two friends are with you here today. Um, so a couple things. Uh, we have a couple things we want to give you. Uh, first is um, uh, Laura Lively, has, who's one of our favorite conference vendors, has something very special for you. Thank you very much. And we want to give this to you. Thank you. As well. And then we really have something very special that we want to give you from the association. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. These are small tokens of our appreciation for our esteem, for your accomplishment, especially as a catalyst for change, which is part of our vision for every league member. And you certainly have inspired all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Evelyn. I think we all join in congratulating you, Florence. Nicely done. This concludes our 2013 Mary Harriman Award Luncheon. Please feel free to take the table centerpieces as keepsakes, but if you would be mindful to give the first preference uh, to those leagues whose Mary Harriman Award winners are depicted, and please leave the frames behind. 
I, listen, I, I get a script, girls. Come on. <laughs> That's right. I'm following my script. We'll see you back here at 4.30 for our keynote address. Until then, enjoy the next set of workshops, which will begin at 2.45. Thank you so much.